for more on what we can expect in April, let's bring in the chart master, Carter Worth of Worth Charting. Uh, what are you seeing? What are, what are the charts telling you, Carter? Well, sure, just to touch on what you're talking about, it's been all multiple expansion, right? We know that to begin the year, the S&P 500 tech sector is trading at a multiple of 22, it's now 29. SOX index, we're trading at 16, it's now 24. So the earnings will have to come through and deliver, otherwise, in principle, you will get the echo of this run-up, which is some sort of give back. But for what it's worth, and these are not really statistics, it's more stock traders almanac kind of thing, and you can buy it in any store. If if April, if Q1 is positive, April is positive 71% of the time. If Q1 is negative, April is positive 58% of the time. So what we know is momentum is a powerful thing. If you've got a Q1 that's good, it follows through in April. Just to put those numbers in perspective, unconditionally, all Aprils, going back to 1929, um, April's are up about 65% of the time. And you see the stats here on the screen. But what we really have is we have a very bifurcated market. And so the question is, and you guys have discussed it and debated, is the move into um, former laggards? Remember, the, the NASDAQ 100 had its first negative total return year in 13 years last year. Uh, and so is the move back into those names, is that a bullish thing? Because they're a big weight, it's bullish. Or is it the face of fear? Meaning that kind of multiple expansion is people hiding or doing what is good technique, going to higher ground in the event that there is a slowdown ahead. But I mean, consider the fact that the S&P itself is up seven, but the equal weight S&P is up two. Or the fact that tech and telecommunications or communications both up 20% plus when you've got energy and banks and financials down 6%, almost 3,000 basis points of spread. That is all uh, a very behavioral. Um, and to some extent, it makes sense when things are getting dodgy, the British expression goes, you, you seek out safety. As it relates to the S&P, we are right up against the downtrend line. My hunch is it's right to take some profits if you have them. Profits if you have them. How does that feel to you, Jeff Mills? Take profits if you have them. Well, I, I certainly agree. Unless you're, unless you're a particularly nimble investor and you can play the move that I think we might end up seeing in April, you know, I agree because to Tim's point, things start to crystallize about the economic picture and the earnings picture. And then once again, we have a problem because I don't think these valuations are going to be supported. And the last thing I'll say is, you know, I know people talk about these rolling bear markets and it, it's good for the overall index. And it certainly has because right now it's been comm services and discretionary and tech with the rest of the market left behind. But what about when that bear market rolls on from there to some of the other sectors that are smaller weights in the index? Uh, that could be an overall drag, uh, and I think that's what we might be in for. Steve, do you want to respond here? Or Tim? Well, yeah, Steve, why don't you go yeah. first? Yeah, so to, to comment on the trading cycle, we have definitely ha have the uh, ebb and flow. And when you look at a chart on the S&P, Tyler, we have to break through that 4,200 mark in the S&P or else all of this is just another trading exercise and we slap right back down. What made me worried was when the market broke the 200 day moving average and then we rallied back above that. So while the market is above the 200 day moving average and inching closer to that 4200, I don't disagree that you should take profits. We, we saw a huge sell off, mm -hmm. but just understand where your bull barometer is and that's 4200. All right, uh, uh, Tim, one final thought, yeah. quick. The Brits have funny words for things. Yeah. I mean, why are yeah. French fries chips, guy? I, why is know, the what? elevator a lift? But why do you mayonnaise on anything, Chris? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, that's really all I wanted to add. No, you make a great yeah. point, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's leave it on that note. There. I think you why should. Not? It's been a great <laughs> quarter.